And one week from tonight, the Hannity team is going to be headed off to Ames, Iowa. That is the site of the Republican primary debate that is hosted right here on the Fox News Channel. Now, the big debate is followed by the Iowa State Fair, fried Twinkies next Friday, and then the Iowa Straw Poll on Saturday, where voters statewide will cast ballots for their preferred Republican candidate. So who's going to come out on top? And could next week's showdown prove to be a make-or-break event for some of the GOP nominees? Joining me now, a man who has a lot on the line next week, and that is former Minnesota governor, Republican presidential candidate Tim Pawlenty. Governor, welcome back, sir. Uh, thank you, Sean. It's great to be with you. Now, some of your fellow candidates are promising me uh, pork chops on sticks, fried Twinkies. Uh, let's see, Godfather's Pizza from Herman Cain. I just, you know, there's going to be a lot of food at that fair. Well, we're going to have at our uh, Ames Straw Bowl booth the Dairy Queen Blizzard. So I know you like those, Sean. Oh, What's your favorite those. Blizzard? Well, uh, great. I'm going to come back weighing 15, the 15 pounds I lost in the last uh, six months. I'm going to gain back. Uh, all right. Th this is important. Obviously, you're nearby in Minnesota. This is a uh, this is a straw poll. Big indicator historically. How important are you viewing the straw poll results? Well, I think it's the kickoff to the formal campaign season. There's a lot of preseason warm-ups, uh, but this is going to be the start of the formal season, and, and I think we're going to do very well. I'm confident of that. Uh, the same straw poll is a, more of an organizational exercise than it is a random poll, but I think when my record continues to get out across Iowa and America, reducing spending and doing health care reform the right way with no individual mandates, no government takeovers, and appointing conservative justices and more, we're going to continue to get good momentum, and I think you'll see the first step of that in the straw poll next week. All right, there's been some back and forth between you and your fellow Minnesotan, uh, that being Congresswoman Michelle Bachman. What's going on? Well, we've had a couple of back and forth. I don't know that people are interested in the back and forth as much as they are the country's in big trouble. The reason I'm running for president of the United States is because I believe I've got the results and the record and the skills and the values to lead it to a better place. And so I know with the economy dropping, the stock market dropping, President Bush, uh, his policies are something that President Obama continues to blame him on. My goodness, it's his economy. He's been president three years, and he is inept. And we've got to get this economy moving. And the proposals that I put forward for jobs and investment are the most specific, boldest, clearest of any candidate in the race, including the president. All right. So we see this, you know, nine out of ten days now, we see a major drop in the stock market. Uh, all the gains for the year have been uh, wiped out. The president had said, well, that's the one thing that he could point to as the great indicator of, of his economic success. That was you know, two years ago in the State of the Union, and then he, he also talked about uh, recovery summer last summer. Every economic metric we have is down. What's gone wrong here, and how bad is it? Well, what's gone wrong is we don't have a president uh, who understands that we need to have a private economy, not just a government economy growing. Or as I say in my remarks and have said all across the country, you can't be pro-jobs and anti-business. And what this president has done, President Obama, is take things from the private sector and bring it into government. What we need to do is take things from government and bring it into the private sector. We need to grow the private sector by shrinking government. And the entrepreneurs, the people who well, want to grow businesses and provide jobs, say the same thing every day all across this country, which is get the government off my back. Yeah. Some talk about taxes. Some talk about regulations. Some talk about energy costs. Some talk about Obamacare. But the message is all the same. The federal government and President Obama have made it too difficult, too discouraging, too uncertain, too slow, too expensive, and we need a candidate, and I am that candidate, Sean, who will ignite the entrepreneurial spirit of this country and get this economy moving. I've called for cutting the business tax rates, individual tax rates, reducing regulations, and more. Those are the kinds of things that will get the economy moving again. You know, while the country's been engaged in the debt ceiling debate, uh, Governor, you know, nobody noticed that the president... Uh, signed on to 608 new federal regulations that are going to cost business $10 billion. That's an enormous amount of money. Certainly, it'll take away any incentive for those businesses to hire. Um, you know, I've been spending a lot of time during this debt ceiling debate talking about real solutions to balance the budget. You know, I, I like cut, cap, and balance. I think that was a good plan. Uh, I thought the Ryan plan was a good start. Uh, I like the MAC plan a lot, the MAC Penny plan. Are you aware of the plan, and, and is it something you would sign on to? Well, I have my own plan. I gave it at the University of Chicago, Barack Obama's former employer. It's available at timpalenti.com, but goes into great detail about what I would do as president to get this economy moving give, give again in the short the version. The re 
Sure. Cut the corporate rate from 35% to 15%. Take the individual rates from 6 down to 2. Eliminate all taxation on dividends, interest, capital gains, and the estate tax. Have a pro-American drill here, drill everywhere. Uh, bring more energy to market to bring down costs. Uh, energy plan, repeal Obamacare, fix Sarbanes-Oxley, fix Dodd-Frank, and make sure we have a regulatory approach that's pro-jobs. And one of the things I've said in that regard is, Let's have a, a sunset on all regulations. Let's also make sure that before regulations go into effect, there's a final up and down vote by Congress so real people who have to bear the burdens of these regulations have one more crack at their elected representative before those regulations go into effect. Those are the kinds of things we need in the long run. And I know you support this, Sean. We've got to have a constitutional amendment to balance the budget. I don't believe we can send politicians to Washington, D.C. anymore and trust that they're actually going to have be fiscally disciplined. Some will, most won't. We've got to have what 49 of the 50 states have, and that's a requirement constitutionally that that budget be balanced. I've got to tell you, that's a pretty impressive plan. Uh, not one thing you said there I disagree with. Uh, Governor Plenty, good to see you. Thank you for being with us. All right, John, thank you. And